we spoke of epic, let us talk about other forms of poems. As I speak to you through these lectures, as I told you earlier also, the purpose is to keep all of us together during this difficult time of lockdown. When I write a research paper or when I write a book, a critical book, my approach is different. Here I have uh, tried to keep it at the level of conversation. I have kept difficult terms in jargon away. The purpose is that all of us remain together in uh, the students. I request you not to go anywhere, remain connected. That is the most important thing. That is uh, how we are going to beat this virus, being uh, connected to each other academically, emotionally, and be our strength. When we speak of uh, uh, other forms of poems other than the epic. Uh, there are many uh, types of poems. Say, let us begin with allegory. Allegory is a form of a poem with where uh, the poem runs at two levels. One is at the level of uh, an accepted story from, a, from say, mythology or folklore and those characters are applied to the modern situation, to modern characters. For example, if we take uh, the characters of Mahabharat, Lord Krishna, Arjun, Kans, uh, 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 sorry, Duryodhan, uh, Shakuni, and we refer to modern persons uh, without taking their names, and we write a poem. So the story goes at the level of that ancient tale and also at the level of a contemporary modern level. So the story goes at two levels. That is an allegory. That is how allegories are written. Then we have a group of poems uh, which reflect the sad part of life, sorrow. A dirge is a poem, uh, is a funeral poem just a short poem written for someone's funeral. Epitaph is a poem where uh, it's a tomb poem, four lines, eight lines, which are written on the tomb of a person remembering that person. Elegy is the most important of this group. It's, it's an elaborate uh, uh, genre within itself. And it reflects, of course, elegy is written for uh, mourning the death of a person, but it is not limited to that. Um, an elegy is written uh, to express sorrow as such. Um, it, is, uh, it is written uh, to express, say for example, elegy written in a country churchyard. Now, elegy written in a country churchyard is uh, uh, expressing the difficult situation, the different, uh, the, the sorrows of a particular section of the society, farmers and the underprivileged people. So, elegy is, uh, is a broad area, pastoral elegies are also there, it's a broad area which reflects which reflects the sad affairs of human life. Then we have hymns and odes. A hymn is a short poem written in, in the praise of a person, place, thing or thought. Uh, just a short poem praising a person. An ode is a, a more profound poem uh, written in praise of a person, place, thing or thought. Uh, and it is also an analysis, uh, a deeper analysis of that uh, thing or person whom we are adoring. And often uh, that, uh, that, uh, th that thing on which we are writing an old person, place, thought or thing, whatever, on which we are writing an old, that thing is addressed. So if I'm writing an ode on uh, a tree, I will address a tree and I will say, uh, 
O oh tree, you are so refreshing. O oh tree, you give us fruits. O oh tree, you are giving us uh, shade. So life is not possible without a tree. And uh, we, we, I will address that tree. So uh, often uh, an ode is written in the form of an address. Uh, we have dramatic monologue, Robert Browning, where uh, a person is speaking to himself and he reveals his inner desires, his inner instincts, often very raw, often uh, even, uh, even unacceptable. Um, we all know my last touches. So what that Duke did to the first wife what was his uh, complaint? What was his? What were his, what were his grudges? And the kind of cold-blooded person that he is, he is talking to himself and he's revealing himself. That is a dramatic monologue. Um, then we have parody and satire. Parody is uh, a, a peripheral where uh, it's a comic imitation of a situation or a person, accent or whatever. And satire is deeper where um, uh, Dryden, Pope, we know, where uh, the poet is being judgmental but with a purpose. The poet wants to improve the situation, the poet wants uh, betterment. So satire is more profound. Uh, then we have lyrics, a lyric, uh, the word lyric comes from lyre, L-Y-R-E, lyre is a, a, is a musical instrument, so the basic uh, feature of a lyric poem that it is musical and it's very short, very very short, so it's short musical poem is a lyric. Then we have romance, romance is an adventure poem and uh, it often involves a hero, a young person and uh, he goes on adventures and uh, it, it's, it's a very appealing, a romantic, a very um, exceptional kind of a poem. The best example that comes to my mind is that of the young Lochinvar written by Sir Walter, written by Sir, Sir Walter Scott. And if I read the lines, O oh, young Lochinvar is come out of the west, through all the wide border his steed was the best, and save his good broadsword, he weapons had none, he rode all unarmed, and he rode all alone. So faithful in love, and so dauntless in war, there never was a knight like the young Lochinvar. And the poem goes on after this. So a romance is, a, is an adventure poem. And then we have sonnets. Uh, sonnet is a 14 line poem. Each line has 10 syllables. And uh, going into sonnet would be uh, a world. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, very broad area. And William Shakespeare in particular deserves to be discussed separately we will definitely be discussing him separately because he changed the rhyme scheme he changed octave system system he changed the structure of the sonnet altogether the romantic rebel that william shakespeare was one of the most uh, influential human beings ever to have walked on earth he changed uh, uh, literature, he changed mental scape, he changed sonnet, he changed drama, he changed human perception in so many ways. So sonnet we will be, especially with reference to Shakespeare, we will be discussing separately. Basically it's a 14 line poems where each line has 10 syllables. So uh, then uh, sometimes we have fable poetry also. Uh, where, where, where there are animal characters, there is, a, I think I spoke of ballet. Ballet is, uh, is, is folk poetry, it's basically folk poetry. So there are, uh, this is not an exhaustive list of the types of poems. I have spoken on uh, the poem, the types of poems that I remember. Uh, you have to look into it because poetry is just the nectar of human life. 
it's the best that a human being can achieve in terms of thought. So go into it, read it and enjoy. Thank you.